Boy, I tell you, this umbrella is great to take out the glare. Staring out on the glare sidewalk, glaring sidewalk, an hour or two is, creates havoc with your eyes after a while. Compare Acts 16.30 to 31. We're looking at relative to the verb believe, relative to the subject salvation. Salvation unto eternal life. You know, there's another kind of salvation. Save money in your bank. You don't get eternal life for that. And save the value of your life by not crossing at the street when a car is coming. You don't die early. Uh, preserve your life. Uh, the value of your life for eternal rewards by being faithful in this Christian life. <clears throat> all kinds of salvations. And they all depend upon the context. And the context. And, once more, the context. Get the context? Then you can compare passages. You can't compare passages that don't have identical or very very nearly the identical context. So Acts 16, 30, 31. And he, the Philippian jailer, the keeper of the prison, where Paul and his entourage were kept in prison. And there was an earthquake, and the shackles were apparently loosened, and people could get free. That what that meant to the keeper of the prison was that if anybody escapes out of his prison, the Romans come back and chop off your head. So they were very diligent and worried. So he was worried he was going to die, and he's listening apparently to what Paul and his entourage were saying about eternal life. And so he asks them, they stayed in the prison. They didn't leave. And, and uh, so the keeper asked Paul and his entourage, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And uh, Paul's answer was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. What is that verb, believe? What is that tense? Believe is the pistosun, pistosun, Imperative mood, command, an aorist tense though, not a present tense. John 3.16 is present. Well, how does this work out? Does it change anything? It's, aorist tense is a completed action of a moment of believing. So in a completed action of a moment of believing, one will at that moment, which says, and you will, at the moment in the future, when you choose to believe, you will be saved at that moment in the future. So at that moment, we'll be saved unto eternal life. Thus, continuous action of believing is not in view either, nor any kind of commitment in order to be saved unto eternal life. So, pistoisin comes from the Greek infinitive pistoio, meaning to believe. So, the Greek word used in the Bible, which is translated into forms of the verb to believe, relative to salvation unto eternal life, is defined according to the Bible usage and Bible, the usage and New Testament Greek dictionaries, to mean to trust, to believe, or exercise a moment of faith. In the information presented that Jesus Christ will save you from your sins, having made provision for you through an atoning sacrifice, provide eternal life for you, in other words, and that through that mental assent, which is devoid of additional actions on the part of an individual other than the mental agreement. The very time that Paul could have said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved, and uh, continue in the faith. No, he didn't say that. This is why salvation unto eternal life is stipulated in Scripture as a gracious free gift act through a moment of faith, perfect tense, which is not of yourselves, not by works, so that no one can boast, no strings attached. Now I'm looking right now at another verse. We had present tense in John 3.16. We have an aorist tense in Acts 16.30-31. And we now have a perfect tense in Ephesians 2.8 and 9. It's all grammatical. But interestingly enough, it's still each way, each verse, with a different verb form, still indicates that at that moment you have forever eternal life. Look at Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For it is by grace you have been saved, perfect tense, through faith. So at the moment of faith, that expression starts in a past moment, and it continues on forever. And this, not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Click on here for the rest of this verse, or we'll give you a few phrases to get the point across. You will be saved. In a 16, Acts 16, 30, 31, then says, Indicative mood, a statement of fact, future tense, signifying being instantly saved unto eternal life, whenever the individual expresses, which is future until the moment one believes, a moment of faith alone, in Christ alone, plus nothing else. And here we have in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, you have been saved, because who is Paul talking to? Talking to the believers of the church in Ephesus. You have been saved, you have been saved, since the moments you believed in the past, with ongoing present results forever. So Paul can keep telling them that they're saved, because the moment they start their salvation, it's forever. 
you and your household. Now this phrase in Acts 16, 30, 31, this does not imply that if the jailer believed that the rest of his family would be saved, but it does imply that the jailer and anyone in his household who does believe chooses to believe his own volition in the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ will be saved Future when that future moment comes, when they believe. It further implies that anyone who does believe in the Lord Jesus will be saved because it's for everyone. In view of the normative rules of language, context, and logic by which God's word must be read and interpreted, the integrity of this passage cannot be violated or added to by imposing what other passages might or might not stipulate relative to salvation unto eternal life or any topic. A lot of times they confuse the word salvation for for early physical death. No, no, you're going to save it. You're going to live out your years. That's a different kind of salvation. Hence, Acts 16.31 remains a message that all who express a moment of faith alone in the aorist tense, completed action, in Jesus Christ alone plus nothing else, will assuredly be saved unto eternal life no matter what, because there are no conditions stipulated except the moment of faith. And other passages don't have additional moments either from Adam and Eve on out throughout the ages. So, nowhere in this passage can it be inferred in Acts 16, 30, 31, or uh, in John 3, 16, uh, that anything else but a moment of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ's capacity to save one is required to be saved unto eternal life. <clears throat> so, a lot of people say you have to continuously believe, uh, but it's not required in order to be stay, to stay or be saved. English and first century Greek requires special context or additional qualifying words in order to make this present tense action in salvation passages continuous throughout the, the present. So we're looking at present tense salvation passage like John 3.16. Present tense signifies action in present time for the duration of whatever the context indicates. The Greek present tense by itself does not automatically convey continuous action, nor does the English equivalent. It may or may not be continuous depending upon the context and or the presence of qualifying words. Are there any qualifying words in John 3.16? It's just, whoever is the believing one, whoever believes. Present tense action in the absence of qualifiers demands a singular action in the present moment without requiring that it be continuous throughout the present. No first century Greek reader or hearer <clears throat> was likely to get a meaning such as continue to believe without the necessary additional qualifiers to the present tense. Like continually, continually believe. Doesn't say continually. John three sixteen, it says whoever's the believing one. So it's the noun. We have Acts sixteen thirty thirty one. It's an aorist tense. Whoever believed. Look at Hebrew thirteen fifteen. Through Jesus, there let us, therefore let us continually offer to a sac to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips. They confess his name. <clears throat> Notice, we should offer sacrifice of praise continually. There is that adverb, continually. So, we should offer is present tense. Yet, in order to emphasize continual action, the word diapentos, continually, must be inserted. If it's not there in the present, you can't go there and, and write it in. <clears throat> present tense in passages depends upon the duration of the, the context of the action. So, you don't continually pay a bus fare while you're riding the bus in order to keep riding the bus. You pay it once, sit down. In the present tense, you sit down, and then now you're presently riding the bus by sitting down. Compare 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work with you in, in, in you who believe. Notice that the word, Greek word rendered give thanks is present tense, indicative mood, meaning a statement of fact. Yet in order to emphasize unceasing activity, the word rendered unceasingly must be inserted to picture unceasing action. If you don't have that, you can't presume it. If the word's not there, you can't add it in, even in your own mind. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. Be joyful always. Pray unceasingly. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Notice it says unceasingly pray. So the word pray is present tense, imperative mood. Yet in order to emphasize unceasing activity, the word rendered unceasingly must be inserted to 
picture unceasing action. It's just basic common information of language, linguistics. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, let's go back and say it's present tense. It's not, but it's good enough. Whoever believes in him, my hope was telling, literally is whoever is the one who's the believer, actually, and should have an everlasting life, eternal life. So if the present tense were the verb in the original Greek of text of John 3.16, and it is not, it is the noun, remember, let's go, let's go with it. Whoever is the believer, then a special context and or additional words such as the epentos, continually, and the future tense will have eternal life, instead of have eternal life, must be inserted into the context in order to convey the idea of the condition of continuous believing in order to continue to have eternal life. But it says have eternal life. So one moment of faith gets you eternal life, not a continuous moment. It's nice that you do. It's a, it's a work in progress. Consider the individuals who were found guilty of various offenses before a magistrate in a court in the times of the ancient Roman Empire and New Testament times. The magistrate declares before the group of guilty people in Koine Greek the language of the New Testament in a statement that directly parallels the second half of John 3.16. Whoever pays his fine shall not perish in jail, but have freedom to go with his life. Does the present tense of whoever pays demand continuous, uninterrupted payment of the fine in order for an individual to have freedom to go with his life? And if he stops paying, he doesn't? No, he doesn't. The answer is obvious. The present tense does not always demand continuous, uninterrupted action in the present. And many contend that you have to continually believe in order to continually have eternal life. Just as the payment of the magistrate's fine was done once in, a pre in present time, such that it results in freedom, the, the payment not having to be continuous. So the believing in Christ to save you when it be begins in present time immediately results in the aorist completed action of never perishing, John 3.16, but the present tense reception of eternal life such that the believing didn't did not continue in order to keep the result of never perishing and possession of eternal life continuously. Because the never perishing is a completed action. And the eternal life by its very nature, once received, is continuously eternal because it has the adjective eternal. And it doesn't have the future tense. Well, if you keep on believing, then you will have eternal life sooner or later. Now, it doesn't say that. It says you have present tense possession. So salvation unto eternal life is portrayed as being received in a completed action moment. So Acts 16, 30 to 31, And he, the keeper of the, seas, of the prison, brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And the answer Paul gave was, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. There is tense, completed action. Notice that the keeper wasn't asking how he could be initially saved and then m maybe not stay saved. There are no qualifiers that would lead to this conclusion. He was asking what it took to be saved once and for all. And he simply did not want to go to hell. He was frightened about of his wits because he knew that the Romans were going to be around if the prisoners did escape and he would lose his head. And Paul did not answer in a continuous tense demanding ongoing effort with the possibility he could lose his salvation either. He answered in the error's completed action tense. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Future tense, you will as in view at the time in the future. It could be a second from now or a long time from now. At that point, you will be saved, Eris tense, completed action. So, believe, restore son, imperative mood, command, Eris tense, not present tense, a completed action of a moment of believing, and the one will, at that moment, be saved unto eternal life. Thus, continuous action of believing is not in view, nor any kind of commitment in order to be saved unto eternal life. Pistoiosin comes from the Greek infinitive pistoia to believe. So we already went over this, you will be saved. You and your household, we already went over that. Anybody who believes, that's including everybody in your household who does the same thing, or anybody outside of your household, all mankind, they have the capacity to believe in an accountable age. They have the opportunity, and once they believe, they'll be saved. So believe. And the same is the same as believe in. I've had people say, no, you have to believe into or believe on, or believe that, or believe upon. It's nonsense. It's just the same way, uh, the same, the same thing in different ways, depending upon the, the Greek construction. Much discussion, Pastor Bing says, has focused on the use of the verb pistoio to believe either absolutely or with the prepositions 
ice into or in an epi on or a pop.